Hey, Brad's got a video for you about packing and shipping, and the items tend to be on the larger side. With packing and shipping, there's some sweat equity. With eBay, there's some sweat equity. If you work hard, you can make some money. Sometimes you get dirty because you just take stuff apart. Quick video today to show you how to ship larger, bulkier items on eBay. Um, the first thing I do, I have this food saver here that I have to ship. First thing I do is measure the dimensions of the product. So this is about 16 inches long and it's about 12 inches wide and about 4 inches width. So what I do is I find a box that is going to work for that. In this case here I've got a Lowe's box that should work just fine for this item. Sometimes these larger, bulkier items are a little bit more difficult to ship. Okay, uh, once you've located your size and got your box, the next thing you want to do is bubble wrap it. I use the medium bubbles or the large bubbles. They work better for me. I've had some small bubble that I've used before for the lar larger items and they've gotten damaged during shipment so I use the medium bubbles typically what you want to do is wrap your item all the way around make sure pretty much every inch of the thing is covered because you don't want any damage to happen because if you as an eBay seller ultimately you'll be the one responsible unless you buy insurance uh, through the post office or in some cases FedEx if a lot of the items go FedEx they are covered up to a hundred dollars but you have to uh, jump through a lot of hoops to get your claim approved so just wanted to show you here um, how to package it securely so you don't have any issues I ship a lot of larger bulkier items and this here is what I use quite frequently once in a while you will get an item that will break up, um, but I would say 96-97% of them uh, arrive safely and that's what you want. Now that you've got every inch of the uh, uh, food saver, which I'm packaging here, whatever large object you have, now that I've got every inch of this covered, it's ready to be placed in the box, shipped. Um, of course you want to take your box up tape it real good all areas because sometimes the flaps can come open so you definitely want to have it taped good because you're ultimately responsible for it until it reaches the customer and arrives at their location You want to find the box that's large enough. This one here is large enough. I'm going to put this in on an angle. If you put it on an angle like that, it's going to give you some more space on the sides. You definitely don't want to go too small of a box. You definitely want to have a large enough box where you're not going to have something that gets crushed or they throw it around during the shipping. The air pillows uh, are cheap, typically. They're about 12 bucks for 440 of them. Um, and not only that, they're the lightest. I've used peanuts, I've used newspaper, I've used lots of different things over the years. And the air pillows are the cheapest um, option when you want to protect your items. I don't use them on everything. Certain things I use newspaper for. But when I want to protect a particular fragile item, like this food saver here, I definitely want to use air pillows with it. So I'll put air pillows all around it. I'll basically create like a barrier, a cushion, all the way around so there's no wiggle room in the box at all. So if it were to get thrown around, the food saver stays intact. So that's how you want to uh, package up a large bulkier item. I'll probably go ahead and put a piece of cardboard over the top here and um, Hope you like this video. Hope you learned something from it. It's a great way to um, protect your larger items when you're going to ship them. 
And uh, if you like this, please like and subscribe. Thank you.